we are reading The Road to Paris. And in chapter one, we met Paris and her brother Malcolm, who were leaving their foster home in Queens, New York, because their foster parents were very cruel to them. So we're going to find out where they're headed now and who they're headed to see in chapter two. To grandmother's house we go. They were on their way to their grandmother's house in Washington Heights. Malcolm reminded her there was nowhere else for them to go. Paris's white, blue-eyed father abandoned her when she was four. Apparently, he couldn't handle being seen walking down the street with a child whose skin was so much darker than his own. He'd wince every time she called him daddy in public. Malcolm's father had been even more of a stranger. He lasted less than a year. Malcolm had seen a picture of him, but that was the extent of his familiarity. As for their mother, she had no use for them. She was the reason they were in foster care to begin with. Paris blamed it on drink. Her mother blamed it on loneliness. In a way, they were both right. Viola drank some when her most recent husband, Clark, was around, but she drank even more after he was gone. Paris remembered clearly the night he left. They were sitting at the dinner table, plowing through mounds of mashed sweet potatoes, fried chicken wings, and green beans too. Clark polished off the first helping and belched without apology. He reached for more chicken, but Malcolm moved the platter, then smiled. If Viola hadn't been there, Clark would have smacked Malcolm, and they both knew it. Whenever Clark had too much to drink, which was about every Friday after he got paid, he was in the habit of smacking Malcolm around as long as Viola wasn't looking. Malcolm never told her, though. He figured it was something his mother didn't really want to hear. Paris didn't like it one bit. This evening, though, with Viola in the room, Malcolm could do whatever he wanted, and Clark wouldn't dare touch him. For a second time, Clark reached for the platter, and Malcolm pulled it away. Stop it, Malcolm, snapped Viola. Paris pressed her lips together to keep from laughing. When Clark reached for the chicken a third time, and Malcolm yanked the dish away, Paris burst out laughing. Clark banged his fist on the table and shot up out of his chair. That's it, he spat. I'm out of here. Aw, oh, baby, Viola cooed. Don't be like that. She snatched a platter from Malcolm, boring her eyes into his before turning back to Clark. Here, sugar, she said, holding a dish out to him. Here's all the chicken you can eat, and I can always fry some more. Forget it, said Clark, heading for the door. Viola set the plate down, slipped past Clark, and blocked his path. Look, honey, I'm sorry about Malcolm. He was just playing. You know how kids are. Actually, I don't know. And guess what? I'm not really not into raising somebody else's brats. Clark, look, if you want, I can send the kids to my mother's for a while so we can have some time alone. How would that be? The more desperate Viola got, the softer her voice became. But, but Clark just pushed past her and disappeared into their bedroom. Viola ran in after him. Paris and Malcolm stayed at the table, picking at their food quietly. A few minutes later, Clark slammed out the door, suitcase in hand. Viola stayed locked in her bedroom for the rest of the night. Good riddance, said Malcolm. Yeah, good, said Paris. Good riddance. Clark being gone was nothing but good for Malcolm and Paris. As far as Paris was concerned, he was nobody her mom should be lonely over. And yet, Viola was. That was when Viola started going to the local bars every night, where she drank to make herself feel better. Sometimes that feeling better took days, and Paris and Malcolm would be left home alone. Malcolm did his best to take care of himself and his little sister. One day, their grandmother dropped by during one of Viola's absences and discovered the truth. She called child welfare immediately and Paris and Malcolm had been in foster care ever since. Grandma was the one family they had left. 
one bus and two subway train rides after leaving Queens. Paris climbed the stairs of her grandmother's brownstone and rang the bell. A voice crackled from the intercom. Who is it? Hi, Grandma, said Paris. The intercom popped and sputtered. Paris? Yes, Grandma, and Malcolm, too. Good Lord, said Grandma. What on God's earth has happened now? Well, that's the end of chapter two. Not uh, the welcome I'm sure they were expecting from Grandma, but we'll see what their conversation is with her in chapter three. So stick with me and come back for chapter three.